Okay, so enough of this one. We've covered this. And basically, I'll give you a, a summary. Get one more book and then we'll do a summary. Uh, this one is a classic. It's nicknamed The Brick by Polgar, uh, Susan's father, Susan and Judith, Laszlo Polgar. Now, we have this at PC Chess Club. Joplin Chess Club has this too. But what we have that they don't have is we have the two other bricks that go with it. One is called uh, Chess End Games and one is called Chess Middle Games. In Chess Middle Games there are 77 themes, 77 different types of themes to know middle game themes. Here's an example. Uh, the way this is written or laid out is it's checkmate in one and then mate in two and then mate in three. And then back towards the end, he's got some simple end games. Uh, it has both what's called a miniature and what's called a Meredith. And a miniature is where you have seven pieces or less on the board. A Meredith is where you have 12 pieces. If you have eight to 12 pieces, the technical name for that is called a Meredith. Okay. Now, long time ago, Martin Stahl the uh, tournament director at Joplin Chess Club. He was a student at PC Chess Club. And I really don't want to get into uh, rumors, allegations of uh, spying and stealing, but I'll just say that uh, that may well be the reason that uh, Martin was uh, kicked out, booted out, told to leave, don't come back. But anyway, We'll keep all the politics out of it. We'll just stick with chess. Uh, this is the position that he could not get. He sent me an email. I'll show you the email sometime if you want to see the email. Just email me and I will forward you that same email that Martin Stahl sent me that he could not figure this out. This is white to move. In here, for those that have this book, those of you that have it, or you want to get it and look it up, it is diagram number 745. And this is the exact position. I've marked it. This is the exact position that Martin sent me about and seemed so chaotic about. I was like, what in the world is this guy going on and on about? This guy is just going on and on and on about. I can't see it. I don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm like, Martin you don't get it, how can you not get it? You could spot this thing, man. You could spot it easy. I could spot it in like half a second. And that was back when Martin was so big on, uh, well, you need a tournament rating. You have to go do tournaments. You think you're so good, go do tournaments. I was like, no, Martin, do not go do tournaments. If you're trying to break a record, the last thing you want to do is screw up your chances to break that record. You don't want to do that. Now this is the position that Martin Stahl was so frantic about. Just, just like chaotic. He said, I can't get it. I don't see it. So we'll go back here to 745. I think it's the bishop move up. I think the, the right one is the bishop move up to C8. But we'll double check it. Just so we can say we looked it up. Officially looked it up. Just to make sure. Yep. That's it. Bishop C8. That's the first move. Now, this one is the one that we use as a drill book. This is not what you learn checkmate with. This is more like a drill book. This is when you know pattern recognition, then you go ahead and you blitz through it. And here's the reason why. Because if you take it, Checkmate. 
Rook's got that, that. Queen's got that, got that. Queen covers Rook. And besides, even then, uh, that wouldn't even apply because the queen uh, covers that square anyway. The king couldn't go. Bishop's got that. You would still need a rook or some piece to cover that flight square. But that's the reason why. And if they don't, They come down here and they take it. That's simple. Real simple. You take the queen. Checkmate. You see here? Queen, queen, bishop, all along this line. Bishop's got that. This bishop has that. Queen and bishop has that. So this piece here is blocked in. The king can't go out. His only flight square is blocked in. So either way, I mean, done deal. And I did not for the life of me understand what is it that Martin just does not see. Martin Stahl just doesn't see the checkmate. I don't know what the deal is. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going through his head. Maybe that's why he's so low rated. Maybe that's why he can't get his rating up. I don't know. But I'm trying to set a record to um, make the norms if I can. <laughs> I'm open prey. It's a lot of study to it. But if I don't, I'll still be a good coach and a good teacher. And I'll set the path for other people to follow. And the record we're trying to break is to get three norms in three tournaments. You get 25 provisional games. And if you can play in a tournament that has nine rounds and it has people from other countries and you can beat seven of those nine GMs, grandmasters, you make a norm. Well, the quickest way you could do it would be if you did three tournaments. You did the first tournament, norm one. Second tournament, norm two. Third tournament, norm three. There you go. Three tournaments, three norms, make sure that you get your rating 20, 2,500 at least, at least minimum, and they award you the Grandmaster title. Uh, I came up with, coined the term, the academic rating. You take a bunch of tests, you can do solitaire tests out of Chess Life, you can do a lot of the Convecta software, excellent software. Um, that will give you a rating as well. They give you moves just like this, and they ask you, you know, can you spot the move? Uh, what's the winning move, and how long does it take? I saw this, bam, just like that. I was like, wham, bingo, that's it right there. And the reason is, I don't know why they can't spot this. Reason is because remember what I just talked about in the other part of the video segment? I said you see the final position. That's your final position. You have to see that. You're going to either see either this as your final position, queen and rooks, like in Bruce Pandolfini's endgame course, he talks about queen and rook roll. You kind of you walk them up, you know, and walk them down the board. Well, I knew right off. I mean, bam, that quick, I knew. I saw this diagram. I was like, bam, that's it queen right there, checkmate. Or, I knew if he had that sitting there that was gone, it was like, bam, checkmate. That's it. Done. Done deal. I was like, dude, what is taking so long? How can this be a problem? You don't see this checkmate? And you think that I play at your level? Uh, not hardly. And you think that you play at my level? Can he stop? Hey, don't be scratching furniture. Um, I was thinking with Martin, Martin Stahl, I was saying to myself, huh, and you think you play at my level? Not even close. Uh, dude, you would get creamed. You would get beat so bad, I would beat you like a drum. Because 
if you see this bonehead move right here, this is bonehead move right here. If you see this coming down, oh, I got their rook. Well, good, good move there, genius, because now you leave yourself straight shot open for this bishop to put him in check. And the bishop has this and this covered. Queen has that. His bishop's in the way. That's the only square left that he could try to go to or move to. And if you got this bishop, well, we can't block with a knight. He's got nothing on here to block anything on this diagonal. They say, okay, well, what if any other move doesn't matter? This is the most retarded move I've ever seen. That doesn't do anything because that's still checkmate. But basically where it all hinges is right here. And this is the part that Martin Stahl failed to get. It's called line clearance. It's a theme. You learn that. You learn Actually, you can learn it two ways. You can learn it as tactics or you can learn it as strategy, line clearance. There's a really good book we'll be covering in our tactics series uh, called Killer Chess Tactics by Eric Schiller. And he breaks it down into some tactics. You got three things. Some tactics are to win pieces. Some of them are to control a square, um, to attack a square. Other ones are to get the king. So you have an attack on pieces, attack on the king, and an attack on squares. On squares has more to do with middle game and positional play. That is where you're going to go for open lines, closing lines, any of that. See, this is opening a line. This is a line right here, okay? So you're trying to open this line to get this queen down here because that would be checkmate. And so, whoops. So, <laughs> so what you have to do is you have to say, okay, I want to see the final position. I either need to be here with a queen Okay, or I need a bishop over here. So it all comes into place like that. It gels. It all fits together real quick. And that's why, I don't know, just a shot in the dark, you know, numerous people have told me that this is the reason they're envious and jealous of myself and PC Chess Club. Um, more specifically, they said that Martin and the group called uh, Joplin Chess Club are envious because we have so much more to offer. And they said that they are jealous because they don't have the same skill level. They don't have the same speed. They don't know the pattern recognition. They don't know any of that. And it's, uh, what was it? They said a third thing. What was it? Oh, teaching and coaching ability. They said, well, you got all the stuff to coach it with and teach it with. You've got all the books. You know, you got a couple thousand chess books. And, you know, like here, you could bring the book out and you could put it under a document camera or you can zoom in on it with the camera. You could show people. You have what's called credibility, okay, uh, or validity. Everything I say has validity and credibility to it because I can show you the books, I can show you the database, statistics, statistical analysis, applied statistics, show you engine analysis, comparative engine analysis, just tons and tons of proof. Okay, so going back to this example, that's your first winning move because that opens it up, line clearance. From here, you've only got two ways they can try to put the proverbial monkey wrench or fly in the ointment is either right here okay trying to take it which it opens a straight shot on the king okay so again set this up here I'll back it up slow it down for you okay first move right here open that first line you have two lines here Here's one line, and here's another line, this diagonal. So there's two open lines, two what we call access points. Um, 
access roads rather or paths would be here and I think Maurice, Maurice Ashley um, he's a friend of mine on Facebook but he, I mean that doesn't mean anything he's got a lot of friends he's got, <laughs> he's got the man's got a lot of friends on Facebook but anyway um, yeah Maurice and I talk on Facebook and we talk about training and coaching some grandmaster stuff but anyway getting back to this this right here, that is your final position, what I just talked about. But that's your, that's your access point right there, your path. Boom. And the same way, if you could get this bishop to move or be gone, you could just take that and it would be a done deal. So in summary, I would say the lessons learned here today are themes and pattern recognition. And that is the insider secret of how we strong players, grandmasters, actually play and think. And once I have the title, it's no big deal. It's just another number. <laughs> I'm not concerned about what the rating is. You know, if it says um, your actual FIDE rating is 2700, to me it's just a number. It won't mean anything. It's just going to be a number. I don't care what the number is. I care about winning. Now, here, let's do a summary on these chess books so we can wrap this up. I'll give you a quick summary on what each one is, why we use them. Okay? Now, the first one, Kids Book of Checkmate, okay, that one is mostly patterns, themes, and it's really good. It's the one that I chose to work with a lot of kids and beginners with because right up at the beginning, it starts out and it tells you the corridor or back rank mate either along the side or along the back rank, which is what we showed earlier. And uh, things like queen and rook, queen and king checkmates, those are usually known as support mates. Um, queen checkmates, swallowtails pattern, you know, the pieces, queen and bishop, rook and bishop, rook and knight, bishop and knight, just different ways of getting those checkmates. And then it goes into the patterns like Lolly and Greco and Anastasia and all these different patterns. Now, it just shows you just real simple patterns. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. I'll put that up there for you. If you can see it. It's not like the classic Bishop Knight checkmate, but I chose it because it covers patterns. Okay. Then number two was to teach checkmate and coach it by teaching them to work from tactics, work from the tactics they know. That means when they're doing it, I'm going to go back here. Oh, and another secondary reason was because of the little chesser sizes, and we'll show an example of that because I want to show you guys that what they're talking about here. Um, Mating nets, baiting attacks, forks and double attacks, pins, pin overloads, unpins, piling on. Then the next chapter six was skewers and discoveries. Here's where it gets interesting. Chapter seven, overloads, removing the guards, and deflections. All about getting pieces away from squares. Um, overloads removing the guard. Sometimes those get crisscrossed up. People say they're the same uh, to a degree, but not really. They're technically different. So let's take a look at this example. Well, let's first finish this up and then I'll show you an example from here. Uh, the next one is this one here. Master checkmate strategy. And that is, go back to the beginning, that is broke down by 
preconditions for a mating attack, three key attacking, the three key attacking techniques. That's in chapter three, playing for checkmate. And then chapter four is like scholar's mate. It's about attacking the F7 square. And then you skip forward. Chapter five is legal or legal's mate. Chapter six is the king hunt. Chapter seven, back rank mate. Okay. And then they put in smothered mate, mate with two knights, and then the corridor mate. Mates using the long diagonal. Mates with two bishops. The crisscross, also known as Bowden's mate. You can do that with a bishop and a queen or with two bishops. But it's nicknamed the crisscross mate or just the crisscross. Sometimes at a grandmaster level, um, they call it being caught in the crossfire. Yeah. If you're caught in the crossfire, it means they got you with a crisscross, got you with a Bowden's mate. Okay, the next one that we chose is this one, 303 Tricky Checkmates by Fred Wilson and Bruce Alberson. And I've talked to Fred before, um, uh, more than once, several times. He's a nice man. He's out of New York City. And um, Fred Wilson, he, he's a character, but he's a nice guy. He's funny. And one of the reasons, the summary on this one, that we chose it is because it's broke down. White to move and mate in two, black to move and mate in two. White to move and mate in three, and then black to move and mate in three. Now, in each chapter where it's white to move and mate, they're gonna give you a breakdown by tactics or themes. It's one of the best ways to learn. Uh, like example, problems 1 through 13, back rank and other corridor mates. About every 13, I want to give you about a dozen examples. Uh, rook and bishop corridor mates. Diagonal mates with queen and bishop or rook and bishop or only a bishop. And then bishop and knight mates, support mates with the queen, etc. I don't want to go into each one. But the idea is... You know the theme. You know how it's done. You look at it and you say, oh, it's back rank mate. Hmm, okay. So you look at this and you know there's one move and the second move is going to be checkmate. And you know it's going to be on the back rank. Okay. Or you know it's going to be down here. It's going to be the last category, quiet moves and zugzwang, or zugzwang, uh, depending on how you pronounce it. I usually call it Zugzwang. So you go to that. Then we use this one. And these are the same ones that I used when I was learning it myself. So it's not just me out here throwing out books or videos. A lot of this stuff is stuff that I actually tried, tested, and I know it works. And I've used it in hundreds and hundreds of games if not thousands. I've used it definitely in hundreds and hundreds and it definitely works. Um, this one was a simple one. It's just all real straightforward and it's just mate in one, two, or three. You start out with mates in one and they're all mixed up. It's anybody's guess what kind of pattern it is. Then you go to mate in two, and then mate in three. Progression. Think progression when you think that. This one is a classic. Uh, Renaud and Kahn, the Art of the Checkmate. This one is just like the first one, Kids Book of Checkmate. It, but it's more like this. I'll show you a quick view of it. Yeah, a lot of explanation, a lot of talking going on because they want you to see the patterns, but they're gonna say, well, here's an example of Bowden's mate, the crisscross mate, but here's a couple of games, real games between real people, not just this study or problem, you know, some made up position. These are taken from real games by real people. And they're gonna show you how they got there. 
a lot of people know the tactics, but they don't know how to set them up. They don't know how to get there. It's like, I know the checkmate. Hmm. Like, I'm sure Martin Stahl knew that was checkmate. But he wasn't thinking level-headed and clear to think, wait a minute. Files are lines, ranks are lines, and diagonals are lines. You're either closing lines or opening lines. If this bishop was not in the way and you asked Martin Stahl, checkmate in one, can you find it? He'd probably say, right there, and he'd probably spot it. I mean, now, a couple of years later, this was back in like 09, he would probably, I hope, five years later, he'd spot that checkmate in one instant. So that's how you know your first move had to be anything to get that bishop out of the way because this rook is going to be vulnerable as soon as you move it. But with this bishop gone out of the way, you got a straight shot to going right down there to that key square, which is an access point. Right there. Protects the rook and secures both ranks, done, dead. <laughs> King is dead, checkmated. So remember this one, art of the checkmate, and then this one, just all puzzles, but it's set similar to um, this one. These are very similar, okay? This one is just one, two, and three. This one, I believe is like a two, three, four, five, and I think six. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's it. So this one, these two are good drill books. This one is what we use to drill for speed. Checkmate in one, two, and three, and there are tons and tons of two. Uh, what does it say? 306 problems. There's 5,334. And 306 problems are checkmate in one. 3,412 mate in two. 744 mate in three. 600 miniature games. 144 simple end games and 128 tournament game combinations plus the solutions. Well, the key is there's 3,412 mate and two. So that right there is a no-brainer. That tells you that that thing is built for speed. You don't use this so much to learn from unless you're like really rank beginner or a little kid. Then you say, oh, okay, I'm doing checkmate in two. I do something, and they're going to block it, and the next one's checkmate. Right, got it. Well, if you're trying to be grandmaster, or you're trying to set a record, like to do it in just three tournaments, because there's three tournaments minimum, you can't make two norms in one tournament. So to get your three GM norms, it's going to take you three tournaments minimum. And with 25 games, you're going to have to play more than 25 games. Because you're going to have to get seven out of, well, yeah, seven out of nine. You're going to have to score. You're going to have to play nine GMs, and you're going to have to beat seven of those nine grandmasters. So here's that one. And then the next one. Is this one, the one that goes by themes. And as I showed you earlier, recap, once you know tactics and you know different types of checkmates, then you start learning uh, what some people call a motif or like an idea, a motif. Uh, I just call them themes. It just you expand on the theme idea, like the queen sacrifice theme. Checkmate without the queen. Storming the castle position. Chasing down a king that's not castled. Discovered check and double check. And then pawn promotion is chapter 6. Chapter 5 is discovered check and double check. And then chapter 7 is a variety of motifs. So I could be right, 
when I say motif, that it's uh, like a theme or a motif. Yeah. In fact, I don't know what they'll say here. This has been ages since I've looked at page 164. But just to humor my competitors, rival chess clubs will look at that. So far, you've been given some hint of the basic idea or technique that applies to solving each of the diagram tasks in this book. Sometimes the hint was very broad. Sometimes it left you with plenty of digging to do. Okay, But in this section, you're on your own. Of course, you know who makes the first move. Consequently, you know who will engineer the checkmate. But as far as the method is concerned, it's up to you to discover how victory is to be achieved. If you've studied the earlier positions attentively, you should have no trouble with the diagrams in this section. <coughs> Excuse me. So much for that. And then we usually use this one to drill with. We've got anthology accommodations to drill with at PC Chess Club. We've got, uh, what is it, the brand new one. I think it's the third, no, I think it's the fourth one, the fourth edition uh, combinations book from Chess Informant. And I don't know, you just, you have to get in there, you have to study. I know there was a comment left on um, one of, I, I think it was uh, some page uh, Martin Stahl had, and I think it was like chess.com or something. He left a comment on there that struck me as being really odd, kind of bizarre. Um, he was asking people about how to set up these arbitrary positions. Just like arbitrary means like random, no set order. And he wanted to do, um, I think it was bishop and knight or two bishops, something like that. But he wanted to set up this basic, very basic mating pattern and I thought man uh, well if you had chess base dude you wouldn't have to do that so I did a simple search on chess base I just typed in got on there typed in bishop and knight okay went to a material search came back with 1375 yep 1300 and set 1375 positions is what chess base found that were all bishop knight checkmate and obviously being from real games you could sort them by rating you could sort them by country by gender men women whatever doesn't matter 